Hi everyone, in today's video I would like to answer a question which I get very often. What is a deep membership? How to identify deep regions? The methods that we use in our daily practice are almost 100% based on the slender beam approach, which is Euler's Bernoulli hypothesis, plain sections remain plain. So we use sectional method very often, but we should also realize that it's only valid for slender regions. For this reason, I'm going to discuss what is a deep region, what's a slender region. There's a common misconception that a member could either be a deep member or a slender member. This is not true. Typically, very common, you do have some regions which act as a deep region. There are some other regions which act as a slender region. Almost every member will have a region which qualifies as a deep region. This is the objective of this video. I'm going to make a little sketch to give you a couple of quick tips to be able to identify deep regions quickly and then I'm going to spend a couple more minutes to show you one page from a PhD thesis which shows the recorded stress distribution that would help you better identify deep regions. All right, that's enough talking. Let's get into work. Question is how to identify deep regions. Two types of regions. Slender regions, the type of region we can analyze. In undergraduate education, this is the only method that we teach. So if you know only one method, that is going to be this method, which is slender beam analysis. So slender regions, very common. Plane sections, transverse stresses equal to zero. Typically, hook. Euler's Bernoulli. This is actually this hypothesis is this. We use sectional method. So sectional method uses uh, the concept of moment, shear force, axial force, and it is based on strength checks at certain sections. For example, mid span. So this is section by section. You draw moment, shear, axial force diagrams, determine the most critical sections, and you do your moment strength check or moment design or flexure design or you do your shear strength check or shear design at those certain sections and you complete your process. So this is pretty much what we do, relatively easy to do. We use computer programs, they are all based on this concept, right? The second one is deep regions. This is much more common than what you would think. So I'm also going to say common in structural systems. It's just the opposite. I don't want to repeat all of these. Plain sections do not remain plain. Transverse stresses are not zero. Hook Euler Bernoulli hypothesis do not apply. You cannot do sectional analysis. I would say just the opposite of slender regions you cannot use sectional analysis method call this does not apply or is not valid in other words it should not be used so let's look at how to identify deep regions and you would be surprised to see even a simply supported member you keep designing every day will also have regions which qualify for a deep region so let's just do example one this is going to be a simply supported member one hinge one roller the mid span let's put a point load this is cross section couple of reinforcing bars we call this effective depth which is represented by small d this is the entire height of the section you would think that a deep member should look like a deep member not necessarily. Any member will have a deep region, even though the member is slender. So the issue is that these forces will 
introduce compression into the members. There is going to be some local disturbances in these regions that would invalidate this transfer stresses zero assumption as well as it would invalidate plane sections remain plane assumption. These are the local regions which are going to be deep regions. What you need to do if you have a point load you just need to go D away from the point load in both directions and this is going to be your disturbed region. It's a local region in which you are introducing the load. This is called the region. Call this the beam region or call this disturbed region. Same applies here from the point load application. You need to go D and D. So this is again D, D and then it is same. This is going to be disturbed region. So what you end up with in between would be B region. That's the region you can analyze using your sectional method. This is B region, also called as beam region. Call this also Bernoulli region. So this is that region. This is that region. In other words, this is the region you can apply your sectional method. This is the only region uh, you can analyze using your daily methods. This is B region. This is B region. If you look at this beam, the percentage of D regions are larger than the percentage of B regions. When you are using design codes, whether it's ACI, CSI, Eurocode, New Zealand, Japanese, and so on, those codes will always make you check stuff a certain distance away from the support away from the point load because this region is a disturbed region you shouldn't be applying your sectional method in that region so that's the logic behind checking everything a certain distance which is approximately d away from the disturbances this is called disturbed region because you are disturbing the beam by a local effect which could be a point load which could be a support reaction which are essentially the same effect you are introducing compression in to the members. In the second example, I will show you a frame. This covers also foundation elements. You might have some uniformly distributed load or you might have a point load applied. So the question is how to identify D and B regions. I'm just going to identify D regions. Whatever remains would be your B region. For beam column joints, determine joint cores. So this is joint core. It's definitely a disturbed region. From these, you have to go D away. These are going to be your deep regions. And you will see that it is very, very common. I would like to show the distance. If you look at your design code, you would check things such as shear capacity D away or a certain distance away from the face of the column because of this region. This one again, disturb region, Uniformly distributed load is a little bit of a judgment call. In a frame, you would have it uniformly distributed everywhere, so you wouldn't call this a disturbance. It's not a concentrated load, so you don't have to identify any deep region based on the UDL. But if you have a UDL at a certain location, let's say that you have a concentrated load at let's say here again it's a judgment call so if you have only this much distributed load then again this could also be your D region as well so whatever remains in between would qualify as your B region so, so you would have soil pressure uh, everywhere so it's not a disturbance it shouldn't really affect your regions in any significant manner now i would like to show you stress distribution along a simply supported beam this stress distribution shows transverse stresses what's transverse stress 
it is also called a clamping stress or sigma y that's stress in y direction we assume these to be zero and derive sectional method equations so it's really important that we apply sectional method at regions in which transfer stresses are zero look at section aa which is taken at the top of the beam this vertical axis shows you transfer stresses here again you have to identify disturbed regions d away from your support as well as the point load application that only leaves you the centers or the middle of the shear span in other words you can do a sectional analysis for this region only other regions which we identified as deep region subjected to significant clamping stresses especially at this midpoint because you are introducing the force you have significant clamping stresses this one is section bb this is at the middle of the section again the same concept you have to apply sectional method for the b region only this is at the middle this is the bottom tension zone of the section you see significant compression at the bottom because that's the support region there is really no difference between a support reaction as well as an applied point load this is a very useful document you can download this and you can take a look this is page 11 it might give you a lot more useful information to fill in your question marks with regards to sectional analysis that's it from me today i hope you found this video useful if you have other questions just write it in the comments section and i'll try to record a short video for those questions as well thanks very much for your attention please don't forget to subscribe to our channel to support our research and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.